city of Sebastian. Sir, please welcome uh, Bob McPartland. Good morning. Hey, you know, first it's great to be up here invited by Palm Bay, but I guess from the opening comments Nancy made, we had to meet a quota. That's the reason the city of Sebastian is up here. I don't know. You know, because we are from Indian River County, you know, and uh, originally I'm from Brooklyn. All right, see, now I know we got a good crowd, so I'm always safe then. You know, and it was, uh, you know, because then when I was 18, my mother had, had the Army come and took me away for a while. And then, but I moved to Sebastian in 2000, and I started my career with the Department of Children and Families as a child abuse investigator in Brevard County. And I used to work at the Advocacy Center, which only investigated the worst abuse. So I covered from down in Little Hollywood all the way up to Scottsmore, east to west. You know, so, so I've been everywhere in Brevard County. And, you know, currently I cover the Circuit 19, which is the four counties, Okeechobee, Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River counties for the Department of Children and Families. So I get to travel a lot, and it's great to come up here because, you know, you learn ideas here. I learn ideas all the other counties I go. I bring them home. People think I'm brilliant. But, of course, you know, it's like you say, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I am quite possibly the most dangerous person on the face of the earth, you know. But we get involved in a lot. You know, one of the things is, you know, the lagoon is, is our home. I mean, all of us, we, we can't survive without the health of the lagoon. And, you know, Indian River County, they chose not to partake in the Indian River Lagoon Council. So it was Sebastian who started. They said, look, we want to be part of this. And then we reached out to the city of Vero Beach and also the city of Felsmere, and we were able to get the seat on the Indian River Lagoon Council that was set aside for Indian River. You know, because we're always looking to do, you know, improve the lagoon. We've been doing that for decades down in the city of Sebastian. We've always worried about our storm water. Last year at the Florida League of Cities, we were recognized with an excellent, an excellence reward award due to our stormwater retention and our stormwater park. Every project we do around, down around the riverfront in Sebastian, we always think first about how can this affect the lagoon. Every outfall that we put down there, we ensure there's a baffle box to try and take out some of the contaminants before they do enter the lagoon. As far as, you know, I'm, I'm hearing about kids, we got a skate park too. We just redid our skate park. And it's important to try and get the youth involved for all the initiatives, be it having to do with pollution or anything we have going on. We started our own Sebastian Youth Advisory Committee. So we have youth come in, and then they can bring, hey, what's the problems that are going on? What are you looking to do? As my role with the department, and also because I'm a, you know, an elected official, I get involved in a lot of initiatives. So I'm involved in an initiative down in Fort Pierce for uh, the gang initiative down there. And you know, some people in Sebastian, they go, well, why you gotta get involved there? Well, you know what? Gang violence is a problem down in Fort Pierce, but it does ent enter Indian River County, and a lot of the shootings are a result of the gang activity out of Fort Pierce. So it's like, there's a problem on my doorstep, I wanna make sure I don't let it in. And we work a lot with the school also. We're working on a project right now to try and make Pelican Island Elementary, which is a Title I school, meaning that there's over 90% of the children that attend there are on free or reduced lunch. And we're looking to make that a community school. So part of the thing is you think of a community school, the first thing, of course, is the students. How can we better their lives and empower them? Then it moves out to the families. How can we empower them? And then the community as a whole. So that's one of the initiatives we got going on. Also looking, I think we have the best employees of any municipality, county, I'm just sorry. You know, we, we have about 110 employees. We have an outstanding police department. We stole one of the former assistant chiefs, you know, Chief Blackledge, and he's one of our assistants down there. We run an outstanding citizens academy where the police are interacting with the citizens, showing them how different parts of the, you know, police activities work, how the city works, everything along those lines. And it educates them. And also, we get them involved to become volunteers for the city. We have a tremendous volunteer program. We have volunteers, actually, just in the police department, they volunteer over 10,000 hours a year. That's the equivalent of five full-time officers that are out doing things, you know, traffic safety, patrols, visiting the snowbirds' houses and everything along those lines. So we really engage our, our citizens. I don't know where I'm at in the clock. I'd like a lot of you people to travel down south because we've had a lot of fantastic restaurants and businesses along the riverfront 
We have really, you know, made it vibrant, got rid of a lot of the blight that was down there because we have an active CRA district down there too. So my time is up. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right.